So a lot of people have a lot of questions about destiny versus fate. And uh, so y you could say, I'm going to make this discussion about the human soul and I'm going to call it fate and destiny. The truth is that um, you have only two possible destinies. The first possible destiny is that you will become the perfect, perfect, natural human. <coughs> at some time in your future. That's the first possible destiny. Now, how long it takes you to get to that will depend very much upon your willingness to deal with lots of different emotions and beliefs that are out of harmony with natural love. Now, for some people, it's taken them many thousands of years to reach that state. That state, by the way, is the state of the six sphere in the spirit world and it's the state of uh, being perfected within yourself and perfected in self-reliance. It's a beautiful state to live in as you might imagine or some of you, most of us probably can't even imagine how beautiful that state is to live in but the truth is that when you speak with a lot of the spirits you'll find that they feel just that state is a beautiful state. <clears throat> The second possible destiny that you have is to become the divine angel. That state is an eternally progressive state. In other words, it doesn't stop at a dimensional space or existence. So this is the stopping at the sixth dimension. This state, um, at the moment, there are 22 dimensions or spheres. Right? And it continues above that state. This is the only state in which you become at one with your soulmate. Whereas this state is a, a state where you're not even yet at one with God. And, and you're definitely not at one with your soulmate. Now, the beauty of the process of becoming the divine angel, or in other words, the beauty of the process of becoming at one with God is that God heals all of your emotional injuries towards the genders, towards the opposite gender. Does that make sense? And in the process of the developing relationship with God, because God has this immense love for you, and this love is an actual substance, it's an actual thing, that changes your soul. It physically changes the structure of your soul. So if you could look at a soul in terms of as a, as a picture you would actually see its structure change. And when you're in the 20-second sphere state, you can actually watch the structure of the soul changing as a person receives divine love. And the structure of the soul changes so much that you could no longer call it a human anymore. The soul has now changed into this complete structure, although it is possible to still live here on earth in that state. So, so you can still be human, but the, st the structure of the soul is very, very different in that state to the structure of the soul in this state. And in fact, that's exhibited by the spirit body of the soul in that state. So the spirit body of a person in this state has seven primary chakras, which are all open, both at the rear and at the front of the body. And all of those are operating in a clockwise direction and they're all open emotionally. In this state, there are many other crossovers of energy points that start occurring and you start having you start actually growing more chakras if you like even in your spirit body as a result and the reason why no, nobody's drawn it on earth is because there's only ever been one person in that place on earth and so nobody's been able to see it and then draw it and then get passed down through the generations but in this generation many of you will get to this state and therefore, many of you will be able to draw it and, and also demonstrate it to others in terms of what it feels like, which is more important. So they are the only two destinies that 
are really ahead of you. One of those others. Now, how long it takes you to reach one of those two destinies is totally dependent upon your desire and passion. And that's why tomorrow I want to talk about developing a passion for God. Right? Because it's very dependent. This one is very dependent upon that. Now, as you receive divine love into your soul, you start realising that actually God has far more love than obviously any other being in the universe. That being the case, as God's love enters me and transforms me, it also makes me more capable of loving others. But the interesting thing is, the way God's designed this entire process, you have to come to God first before you can unify with your soulmate. Because the soul union actually occurs in the 21st to 22nd sphere transformation. Whereas the divine angel actually occurs in the 7th and 8th sphere transformation. So there's actually 14 dimensional spaces in, beyond at one moment with God which you will be transforming to become at one with your soulmate. Does that make sense?